Hello and welcome back to Geordie Leather. This is episode 11 where we're going to cover saddle stitching. In the previous video we covered the preparation for stitching, preparing the leather, gluing, uh, chiseling etc. But now we actually get down to some stitching. So let's head across the workbench and we'll get started. Okay, so we're now ready to stitch. So let's start off by looking at some different types of thread. So there are lots of different types of thread for leather work, but generally um, as a beginner, I'd recommend that you just stick with the cheap thread that you can get on Amazon and eBay. It's, um, you can get other more expensive threads, but there's not a lot of difference as a beginner. So I'd say stick with the, the cheap stuff for now until you've developed your skills. So this thread is what we call waxed cotton thread. It's this one is one millimeter. Now, not sure if you can see on the camera, but it's it's actually square. It's flat as opposed to being round like a lot of threads. It's also coated in a layer of wax, which helps it to pass through the leather. It acts as a bit of a lubricant. So it come, these come in a wide range of colors. Um, it's entirely up to you what color you choose. As a general rule of thumb, personally, I try, try to choose a thread which is slightly contrasting to the color of the leather. So this is a nice dark tan leather. And personally, I would use either maybe a dark brown. Now it looks a bit white in places. If this is just the wax that will rub off once you've polished the, the leather, but that's a dark brown. Um, you could use a black, which is a slightly stronger contrast, maybe even some gold, which gives you a lighter contrast, or even some white. I mean, it's totally down to personal tastes. There's some red there, which would be a rather odd combination, but everyone's got different ideas. So I'm going to go purely for the camera's sake with white, because that would be clearer to demonstrate the stitching because it's very strong contrast. So we'll use white for this particular demonstration. So um, <clears throat> so in terms of needles for leather work, there are basically two types of needles in leather work. There's a, a standard leather work needle which has a big eye. As you can see, it's got quite a big eye, which makes it easier to thread the thicker threads through. Another type of needle used is a, a lacing needle, but we're going to cover that in more detail when we do the lacing section. For, so for now, we'll ignore that and we'll just look at the needles used for everyday stitching in leather work. So the most common stitch used in leather work is saddle stitching. And uh, we're going to start off with that because I would say 95% of the stitching you're going, to do, you're going to do is going to be saddle stitching. So the first process is to calculate how much thread you're going to need for the, the project. Because the worst thing you can do is have too little thread. If you start sewing a project and then halfway through it, you run out of thread it doesn't look good. You've got to join thread together and there's an obvious connection point in the stitching there. So always try to calculate the length that you need for the particular project before you start work. It's always better to have too much than too little. So to do that, it's quite simple. If we look at this piece of leather, uh, the we just take our thread and we very approximately measure how much thread one run of stitching will take and then we multiply that by five so for this one length here we'd need five times that length so it's four and that's five so that's how much thread we actually need to stitch that because the extra length is taking into account the inner and outer weaving of the thread so generally five times the length of the run that you're going to stitch is the general rule of thumb. I always add a bit extra just in case. And we just trim off the thread 
<clears throat> and there we have our piece of thread. Now then, with stitching, generally we use two needles, one on each end of the thread. So because it's got a nice big eye, it makes it quite easy to thread. So we just push the thread through the eye and then we bring the needle through. Now to, we don't tie knots and thread in leather work. We use a special technique to lock the thread onto the needle. Now what I'm gonna do, if you watch carefully, so I've got the needle on the thread. I'm gonna bring the point of the needle back over and just support a piece of thread with my thumb. And I'm gonna bring the needle under and just puncture through. You see that? I punctured through the piece of thread. I'm gonna take the needle through right through and pull it until it forms a little knot and then we release that and just pull the needle until that knot slides up snug into the little groove in the top of the needle there so we'll do that again with the other side <clears throat> so we take our needle and we thread our piece of thread through it bring the needle back like so and then bring the point of the needle and just stab through the center of the piece of thread. So you can see that the needle has come through the eye and then it's, the piece of thread has been stabbed by the point of the needle. I'm going to pull that point all the way through and then, as you can see, just pull that back and then we pull again until that little knot slides up to the tip of the head of the needle. Just use your fingers to make sure it's snug. And there we go. Now, if this, if this thread was not pre-waxed, what we'd, we would do next is to take some beeswax and just pull the thread, pressing it down with our thumb across the beeswax and that coats the thread with some wax, which again lubricates it and puts it through the leather much more easily. But as I've said, this is pre-wax thread, so that's not necessary. But what I do is I, I take my finger and thumb and I just run it along the length of the thread, like so, and just check there are no bumps or lumps in the thread which can cause issues later on. So again, squeeze the thread Pull it through, and if you can feel any bumps or lumps, check that before you proceed, because those little lumps can get stuck in the leather and cause all sorts of problems. But we now have a set of needle and thread ready for the stitching process, which we'll do next. So the next step is to physically start the stitching. Now you can hold your piece of leather and your two needles. If you've got three hands, it's very easy. If you've only got two, it's a bit more complicated. So what most leather workers do is they use what's called a stitching pony. Now, over here, this is a stitching pony. All it basically is, is a, a wooden clamp which holds your piece of leather whilst you um, stitch it. It's a third hand. Now it's called a pony because this is actually a seat. You sit on this and you ride it like a pony. So you can either have it this orientation where you slide it between your legs at your bottom and your legs there, or you can turn it round. So you can move this, sorry, you move this to the center and have two little pieces of wood which slip under your hips. Personally, I prefer it this way, but try both. So let's put it on. Insert it under your bottom like so and then we have a little clamp on the side which allows us to put our piece of leather into the jaws like so and the jaws are lined with a leather to protect the the surface and we just clamp it down and that then gives us a nice hands-free access to the leather so we can do our stitching like so Okay, let's 
have a look at this close up. This is the piece of leather which we punched ready for sewing. Now I'm going to show you the saddle stitch which is the most common stitch in leather work. Normally we would start uh, the second hole in and then stitch back before we stitch forward. That strengthens the stitch but because we're demonstrating just the actual stitch itself we won't do that at the moment. So just to keep it clear we'll start at the second hole in. So we pull our needle through and we want to just bring the two needles together. Uh, where are we? There we are and just tension them so that they're both the same length of thread either side. So the next step is to take, it doesn't matter whether you're left hand or right hand, you can start either side. Bring your needle through the next hole and then once it's pushed all the way through, take your right hand and form a cross with the needle and hold both needles. So you can pull that one through. If you find it a bit stiff, or your fingers aren't very strong like mine, you can uh, use a pair of pliers. So what we've got here is the first thread going through the first hole that way and then coming back through the second hole this way. So we're going to pull that thread through until we leave a little loop like so. Now what you want to do then is take the other needle and bring that boot back through the same hole which has come through. Now the reason we've left a loop here is that what will tend to happen is that the point of the needle will try to dig into the thread. So we push the needle through and then we gently tug on that little loop. If the needle has caught, as you can see it has here, we can run hook it before we continue to push the needle through. I'm going to use a pair of pliers just for convenience. Pull that needle through. So we take both threads and that should have went through there. I'm not doing a very good job of this am I? So we take both threads and then we pull them until it forms a little stitch. We just pull those tightly that's our first stitch done. So we'll repeat that. We go through the next available hole with the first needle, leave a little loop. We take the other needle and come back through the same hole and just pull on the loop just to check it hasn't snagged on if the loop pulls freely you know the needle hasn't snagged so we can continue. We just wrap this thread around that needle, pull it through and there we have that. Then we get a hold of both threads and just pull those two threads together and give them a little bit of a tighten and that's our second thread done. So we'll repeat the process through your left needle until you have a little loop and then take your right needle back through the same hole you just come through pull your loop checking you haven't snagged if you haven't wrap that thread around the needle and push your needle all the way through <clears throat> then take both threads and pull them and pull them tight, not too tight, just tight enough for the threads to be pulled through the holes properly. So we'll repeat the process, find your next available hole, pull your first needle through, leaving a loop. Take your second needle, pushing it back through the same hole you just come through, pull on your loop, make sure it hasn't snagged, 
wrap your thread around your needle and pull the needle through. Again, take both threads and pull them and then tension and we'll do the same again. So through with your left needle, pull that right the way through, leaving a little loop and then take your other needle and come back through the same hole pull on your loop to check it hasn't snagged wrap the thread around the needle that's coming through and then pull that through take both threads and tension like so once again so left needle through the hole pull it all the way through leaving a small loop take your other needle push that back through the same hole pull on your loop check it hasn't snagged and then if not snagged wrap it around your needle and pull your needle through pull both threads and apply tension <clears throat> so you're getting the idea it's the sort of skill that comes with repetition the more you do it the faster you can stitch and the more accurate you can stitch when I first started stitching I kept snagging the thread on the needle and caused all sorts of problems but now after stitching for a very a very long time I no longer have that problem I can stitch fairly quickly but it's something you have to practice as much as you can so we'll do it again so we're taking the left needle, insert it into the hole, push that through, leave a little loop, take your right needle, push that through the same hole in the opposite direction, tug on your loop, make sure you're not snagged, and then wrap that little thread over your needle and Pull it all the way through. Pull on both threads and apply a bit of tension and repeat the process. So left needle through all the way leaving a small loop. Take your right needle pushing it back through the same hole Checking you haven't snagged by pulling on the little loop you've left. If you have, you'll feel a bit of resistance. So just pull your needle back a little bit. Let it pull through with the thread. And until it's, when it's released, then wrap your thread over the needle. And pull your needle through. So some tension once more so left needle through the next available hole pull that all the way through leaving a little loop take your right needle go back through the same hole you just come through once it protrudes tug on your loop check it's not snagged if not wrap the loop around your needle and pull the needle through one more tension and we can see already if we just release this we can see that we have the stitches all nice and straight and nice job on the back it's also nice and straight so that's the basis basics of saddle stitching it may look complicated but honestly it's not review the video play it back rewind it and watch it slowly and you'll see it's in with the one stitch needle back through the same hole with the other needle loop the thread through the second needle 
and pull the tension on both threads to apply the required force to pull the thread through and make it lie nice and flat. So there we go, that's saddle stitching. Okay, we just want to finish off by showing you how to finish the last few stitches in a row and how to back stitch and to finish off your threads. So we've got three holes to go as you can see. So we'll just continue as before. So bringing it through, forming a small loop, bringing through your other needle opposite direction, pulling on your loop, make sure it's not snagging, wrap your needle, thread around your needle, pull it through, tension, and the second last hole, same again, pull it through, form a loop, bring your other needle back through the same hole, wrap your thread around the needle and pull it through. So this is the final hole. So do the same as usual, take it through. First needle through, form a loop. Second needle through. And okay, now, Okay, so we're now at the last hole. So um, because this has an exposed edge of leather, we want to avoid this little flap of leather eventually working loose and affecting our stitching. So we're going to continue the stitch so the thread comes around and pinches those two pieces of leather together. So we'll just wrap it round, take it through the same hole it came out of. You've got two bits of thread going through there now so it might be slightly tough so use your pliers and then pull it through and you see this little loop comes around just keep it straight with your fingers as you bring it round and then apply some tension and that nips those two together do the same with the other needle bring that around so that the threads coming around this side and then take your needle through the hole again again you now have three pieces of thread going through the same hole so it can get a bit tight. So do the same with that and again make sure it's nice and straight and lines up with the other one and apply tension. So you now have a, nice, a nicely nipped together end of leather there that won't come undone. So we're going to back stitch a few stitches just so that we could when we cut these threads they aren't loose and they're woven back through the leather just to stop them coming undone. So we just go back to one, the previous hole. So if you find it difficult, just use your pliers and pull it through. So we're just pulling that thread back through like so. And we'll do the same with the other piece, other needle, sorry, through that same hole. through the same hole now, those two ends of those threads are now locked in they won't come out now if this is the face that's going to be seen the most then I personally prefer to have both ends on the back on this side that's seen the least or not seen at all if possible so I always do an extra back stitch back one third of the hole just so that the ends of my threads are both on the the bad the wrong side of the leather so when we come to trim those off any imperfections in the trimming or melting will be hidden away so pull that tight so we've come along normal saddle stitch and then we've gone backwards through the same holes a few times just to interweave the ends of the thread into the leather and that way they won't come undone. So let's take this out of the, the pony and we can see 
that both threads are now on the back of the leather. So let me just adjust my camera so we can see better. Take away my pony because it gets a bit of a saddle sore after a while. So we now need to remove these bits of thread. So just take a pair of snips and cut them a few millimetres away from the leather itself. Now that leaves two little pieces of thread sticking up. Now this thread melts with heat so we just take a, um, a lighter like so and we just gently heat the tips of those um, threads with the flame until they start to shrink backwards. You can see them shrinking and then just press them down with your finger try and nip in the little thread so that it melts and sticks to the back of the existing threads. So there we have it. Try to avoid letting the, the threads catch a light because they will burn and cause little brown stains. So if you can heat them rather than burn them, that's preferable. So there we have a finished piece of stitching. So we'd normally do the back stitching when we start and when we finish a line of stitching. But that's basically it for saddle stitching. So there we have it. We've uh, covered saddle stitching today. Uh, we've shown you how to do the actual stitching, how to do some back stitching and how to finish off your threads. So join me for the next episode, which is going to be cross stitching. So thanks for watching and please click the like button. And if you really could, it would make a big difference if you can click the subscribe button. It costs you nothing, but it's a massive help to the channel. It helps us to keep the lights on. So until next time, thanks for watching. Bye bye.